and you'll be all right. Open the safe. But you see, I... The manager's the only one who can. I, I don't know how. Don't lie. I wouldn't want to lose my patience. Open it. Come on. Hold it. What's the meaning of this? You'll never get away with it. Are you sure of that, Judge? Leave him alone. Let's go. Hurry up, let's go after him.
useless. We'll never be able to catch up with them. They've too much advantage. Let's go back. We'll never be able to catch them with our own forces. Those bandits count on the support of our fellow citizens. The support based on fear. The other states of the Union are building new industries. We won't be able to do so until we have cleared the county of all the bandits who infest it. What would you suggest to make sure these local bandits are a court, would you call in federal help? I'm against it. We all know how armies operate. Violence, destruction, and massacres. Calling in the army would only mean the perpetuation of a state of war. You're right, Mr. Dewey. But I think it only a general amnesty from Washington will bring peace. Uh, fact is that these bandits will never feel part of a lawful society as long as we still hold them responsible for acts committed in in time of war. It's absurd to talk of acts committed in time of war, because they were nothing but crimes by the men of Bill Anderson. No, no, gentlemen. We must rid ourselves of these men on our own, by, by using our own initiative. I'm sure that all of you must have heard of the Pinkerton Investigating Agency. You're not entrusting our situation to an amateur detective. He's not an amateur detective, gentlemen. Pinkerton has an organization throughout the country. No one knows the identity of his agents, which means they are able to operate efficiently. I propose to immediately send a telegram to New York asking for his help. Do you all agree with me, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Now I will write the telegram. I don't need to stress how important it is for us not to breathe a word about our decision. Yes, I agree. precaution is necessary. Yes, right. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time. Did you see my signal? Yes, and I was so nervous, I thought Daddy would never go to sleep. Lucy. I'm ashamed, kid, to deceive him like this. He only has me, understand? He wants me to marry somebody important and rich. But I love you. And then you don't want to marry a man who's important and rich. Mm. Kid, don't go on behaving like this. It's bad for you. I want to see you respected so you don't have to hide. Maybe then we'd find a little... Happiness? Maybe if I hadn't been so young during the big war, if I had fought against those bastards, those bastard unionists, when to kill was not considered a crime, things would be all different. I wouldn't feel this hatred. This is my war, Lucy. And I don't give a damn if my friends are bandits. Yes, I'm sure they must have stopped here. Look at the tracks. They all lead off in the same direction. Thanks for helping us out, Judge. If these tracks really lead to the hideout, we'll get rid of Mr. Anderson's bandits once and for all. And we'll recover the money. Let's not waste any more time. Keep your horses quiet and your eyes open. Let's get going. You're surrounded. You better surrender. Get down from your horses and make it quick.
We've been waiting for your visit, Sheriff. But we expected a lot of you. All of Springfield. Capture the famous Bill Anderson. But you're only a dozen, if I'm not mistaken. Is that all you can scrape up in Missouri? Let's look him over. That's Jack, the cobbler of Springfield. I hope we meet again someday, Bill. <laughs> This one's coming with us. And who's this? It's Josh with the town idiot. Everyone knows him. And this one? That one teach you school. Who are you? Eh, uh, hold it. I want to take him along with us. And keep an eye on him, Zach. And this one? The blacksmith. Listen, Judge Grant, from now on, you better mind your own business. And if you know what's good for you, don't stick your nose in ours. All right, you can all go back into town. And you'd better stay there. Get moving. <laughs> We're going to the hideout. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, have you got anything to tell us? I've already told you. I'm a miner. I've only been working here a week. All right. You asked for it. Think about it. It's useless to continue. He told you the truth. Now, why should I believe you? If one of you was working as an agent for Pinkerton, I don't expect you to admit it. I want to tell you something, friend. Bill Anderson never makes a mistake. And you know why? Because I never take any useless risks. String them up. Zach, where's Kid at? Yeah, he's out like a light. For two days he hasn't slept. But hanging's amusing him, so we'll go and wake him up. Yeah. <laughs> We're ready, Bill. Well, while you still have time, want to talk? We've told you the truth. We know nothing about a Pinkerton agent. All right. You asked for it. Go ahead. <laughs> He's dead, Bill. Chief, the shot came from that direction. Zachary, come with me. If he shot from there, whoever he is, there's no escape. We've got him trapped. We'll wait for him at the bottom of the gorge. Come on, let's go. Don't try to be smart. Drop your gun. All right. 
Let's take him to the hideout. We'll find out who he is. He was an officer with the Union. Before I joined up with you, he saved my life on the battlefield. I'm indebted to him. Let him go, Bill. Are you crazy? Who can assure us this isn't the man we're looking for? I do. I assure you. Free him, I tell you. But he killed one of our men. Yes, but he saved my life, Bill. And Bill, I always pay my debts. Set him free. Wait a minute. Now we're even. If you value your life, you better not come across my path again. He's free. I want you to let him go, you hear? not the one you're looking for. In any case, I think it's better if we leave this place. Dak, go and tell the others. What do I do with those two? Don't worry. I'll take care of them. soon. Springfield isn't going to be fit to live in. The sheriff is recruiting volunteers in a whole county in order to capture Bill Anderson's gang. Thompson, look. Well, he ain't dead. But he might be wounded. Let's help him down. Oh. Good morning to you, gentlemen. If I'm not mistaken, I think I'm in Springfield. That's right. Don't you feel well? Uh, I'm all right, mister, thanks. It was very hot. I'm afraid I had one beer too many on my way over here. But <laughs> Rebecca, she always knows what to do. Uh, well, gentlemen, what I need now is a mug of beer and a nice bed to rest my bones. I think I'll stop over here. May I offer you gentlemen something? Be a pleasure, sir. Thompson, hitch up the horse and take care of the gentleman's things. Uh, excuse me, what did you say your name was? Uh, well, to tell the truth, I didn't say. But I can tell you. Daniel G. Samuelson. <laughs> Samuelson. <laughs> but you've been very kind, so you can call me Dan. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. I'll be right with you. Come on, boys, up to the bar. The drinks are on me. Bartender, Thanks, sure will. I hope you have enough beer to satisfy me and all my friends. <laughs> Come from far, sir? Yes, from the east, Boston. Pretty long way, all on horseback. Oh, I brought my horse on the train as far as Jefferson City. But then I got bored and decided it was better traveling horseback. My horse didn't agree, but I succeeded in convincing her. <laughs> Do you expect to stop here long, sir? 
I ask on account of the beer supply. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm heading west. Yes, sir, that's where I'm going. And in a couple of years, I'll be coming back through here loaded with gold. Mm. Then I'll show certain people just what Daniel G. Samuelson is capable of. Well, the way you're dressed up, I wouldn't say you're exactly in need of any gold. Well, what you see here today is the last suit of clothes that I have left. It's the truth, gentlemen. My family, the great uh, Samuelsons and Samuelsons of Boston, in the hardware trade, got tired of yours, truly. They said I was a good for nothing. But I had my pride to think about. I had to do something besides sell hardware. I knew I could do better, so I took to the road. <laughs> Be quiet, everybody. Let him talk. Speak up. We want to know what happened. Bill and his men were about to hang us because he thought one of us was an agent working for Pinkerton. Then we heard a shot, and the bandit who was going to hang us fell to the ground. Then there was general confusion, and we couldn't make out what was happening around us. And, uh... Then someone hit us on the head, and when we came to, we were alone. And when I untied myself, we both got away. Hey, Stockwell, Bob, take a look. I'll be damned if that's not him. That one? That's Captain Bly. He may be a captain, but he spies for the bandits. He sells information to Bill Anderson. We saw him yesterday, clear as day, at Bill Anderson's hideout. Captain, wait. Is it true that you were at the bandits' hideout this morning? Yes. understand anything. If you're alive, you owe it to me. Do you know who fired the bullet that saved you from being hanged? I did. I fired that shot when they were about to hang the two of you. You were trembling with terror. Yes, sir, I saved you. Now I'm wondering whether I should have bothered. Yeah, somebody's in cahoots with the bandits who protects the rats. But he isn't around here, I can tell you. I bet you he's an important man in this here town. Oblige. But tell me, why don't you mind your own business, stranger? <laughs> there was too many against you. It wasn't really fair. Boy, I can't recall enjoying a brawl like that one in years. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, stranger. You've got a real odd way of enjoying yourself, I'm thinking. Only take my advice, whoever you are. Stop worrying your little head about things that don't concern you. You'll live a lot longer. <laughs> but this is only half of what we had agreed upon. Yeah, but my money is clean while yours isn't. Try spending your money in Springfield in Jefferson City. Corbett. I'm wondering what's holding me back from plugging you. <laughs> I'll tell you. Without me, you and your men wouldn't last more than a month in the state of Missouri. Remember that, Bill. Without me, you'd be tearing each other to pieces. Hold it. Corbett's right. He's useful for the time being. I like this place, but it's too hot. Well, you have to admit we do have good beer. Very good. <laughs>
Who's the gentleman with the cane? Oh, that's Judge Grant. He's the pride of Springfield. He's now in politics, and there's a good chance that next year he'll be nominated senator. It'd be a big blessing for Missouri. Hey, it looks to me like that's the pride of Springfield. She's really beautiful. Who is she? That's Miss Lucy. And the man with her is her father, Major Corbett. Well, I'm not interested in her father. How about introducing her to me? The old man is very strict. Ex-Confederate, rich and ambitious. He owns a ranch near here and considers himself mighty important. I don't think you'd find him very amusing. The man's rich. That's another thing in Miss Lucy's favor. He's rich, all right. But sometimes I ask myself where he gets all that money. But didn't you just say he had a ranch? Exactly. And that's why I ask myself the question. Well, I must be going. Thanks for the beer, Mr. Samuelson, and good day. <laughs> now go straight to the ranch. I'll be home for dinner. I want to speak to Judge Grant. See you later, Papa. <laughs> See you later. Pinkerton agency should have been here a long time ago, wouldn't you say? Yes, it's strange that they sent us no news. Do you think he could have arrived uh, secretly? Who knows? Maybe he's already here. Mm. Uh, it's possible. <laughs> Tell me what you're doing here. Don't tell me you got your rooms mixed. That did you? That's an idea. But I have an excuse. When I drink too much, I get my numbers mixed. Huh. I get my faces mixed. I thought you were stupid. But now I see you're a busybody also. You got me pegged, all right. <laughs> uh, sorry I disturbed you. <laughs> it was in the famous Battle of Contreras, I think, that your father saved my life, Miss Lucy. Wasn't he? 1847. We were 20 years younger, Gonzales, and full of illusions. It was a nicer world. A man of worth had the place do him. The Old South was very prosperous. And no one had crazy ideas about a black man being equal to a white man. Please, Papa, why do you always harp on that? I'm sorry, Lucy, but it's absurd you should have the same ideas as those hypocrites up north. You know, she got those ideas by reading Uncle Tom's Cabin.
Papa, it's late. May I retire? Miss yes, Lucy, you may. Good night. Good night, Miss Lucy. Night. Hmm. Well, I'll give you the money now. This is the big amount. Each time it gets more and more difficult to get it across the border. Yes, I know, Gonzalez. I'm very well aware that's become more difficult. Uh, this is the last payment this way. For the following payment, I've already thought of another system. Kids, I'm sorry, but tonight I can't stay. My father is with that Mexican who comes here once a month. I don't want them to notice my absence. It's impossible to go on like this. Come with me, Lucy, now and forever, without turning back. Each day may be our last, you know that? Please give me time. <laughs> don't worry. I promise you I think it over. You will, huh? Let's go now. you go back to Pinkerton and tell him someone's already taken care of the bandits. And that someone doesn't need help from anybody. <laughs> I wasn't going to kill him, if that's what you want to know. I had an idea you weren't far. I wanted to force you to come out. Oh, by the way, do you still have that young man's photograph? <laughs> Since we're both after the same thing, why don't we work together? It'll be better than fighting against each other. I'm with you. But that youngster, I want you to leave him to me. But if you're only interested in the youngster, will you tell me why you're also going after the others in the gang? I want him alive. As long as the others are around, I'll never get him. Oh, who's that man with Corbett? Come on. Hey. One moment, my friend. I'd like to know what it's all about first. A lot of the money robbed by Anderson's men is transferred to Mexico. I'm sure that man's Mexican. Maybe he can explain a lot of things. Let's go. down from your horse and up with your hands. What do you want? Where's that money? What are you talking about? The money Corbett just gave you. You must be crazy. I've only been to dinner at the Major's. Well, my friend, you gonna talk? No, please, wait. If you don't want to get killed, my friend, just follow these orders. Major Corbett! Major Corbett! Major Corbett! What is it? It's something important. You'll have to come down. Tell me what happened. Come down, Major. Right away. my room and keep watch at the window. Anything serious, sir? Well, I don't know yet, but let's keep our eyes open. Now, tell me what this is all about, Gonzalez. 
Well, uh, two men held me up after I left your house. They took the money and uh, made me confess. Do you know where they went? Springfield. They said they were going to denounce you to Judge Grant. We gotta stop them before they get there. I'm afraid it's too late. Get your hands up, Corbett. I've got enough on you to send you to jail. Buying skunk! <laughs> Good morning. Say, you don't look like you've slept much, Mr. Samuelson. Tom is damn right I didn't. My next door neighbor, Captain Bly, makes more noise than a hoot owl. Mr. Samuelson. Yeah? I'd like to ask you a question. Hey, go right ahead, Sheriff. I'm at your disposal. Do you know what happened last night? <laughs> Whatever happened, I sure couldn't have heard it. Captain Bly snores too loud, Sheriff. Two men broke into Corbett's ranch. They killed the Major and two of his men. Bill Anderson again, huh? You hear that, Bly? The bandits were up to their old tricks again. And they killed Corbett. I never mentioned bandits. At least not them. Say, I don't get the point. Mr. Samuelson, Captain Bly, I must arrest you. You'll have to be questioned by the county authorities. Yeah, on just what grounds? Can I ask you that? The murder of Major Corbett and his men. You're mistaken. You must be joking, Sheriff. I've already told you that neither Captain Bly nor myself left our rooms. That's what you say. But Mr. Hopkins saw you come in at sunrise. And two of Corbett's men recognized you. Why, we only shot in self-defense, Sheriff. You all don't know who that Corbett was. He was working with Bill Anderson. Why not believe an agent who was working for Pinkerton instead of a stranger? That's right, except he's the Pinkerton agent, not I. A reward collector. A jackal. A filthy imposter, that's what you are. Oh, I'm not an imposter. It was you who decided I was an agent working for Pinkerton. And I gave you the pleasure of thinking you had guessed right. But if I'd known who you really were, I wouldn't have agreed to work with you. <sighs> and I wouldn't be here now. We'll get out. Suppose you had met a real Pinkerton agent. An agent like this man, Hopkins. Do you think you could have come to an agreement with him? Do you think he would have delivered your man to you all wrapped up in a nice package with his compliments? I reckon now you aren't going to need the Bill Anderson reward. A lousy $2,000 since you took the money <laughs> from the Mexican. Wait, hold on. Didn't you say you knew the serial numbers of those banknotes? That's proof, then. We've got to turn them over to the judge to prove the complicity of Corbett. No? It would just be useless. If we had turned the money over right away, maybe he'd have listened and believed us. But now no one will be able to convince the judge we didn't kill Corbett in order to rob him. Uh, Hopkins. How can a <coughs> fellow like him ever catch Bill and his men? Twice now that man's crossed my path, and both times I've managed to lose him. The problem now is how are we going to get out of here? Alan, why don't you sit down? When we do get out of here, do you want to continue our partnership? Are you still hoping for that reward, Dan? Uh, no. Nah. It's not only that, Alan. Anyway, it's an insignificant sum. After all, I'm a professional. I'm not a common criminal, you know. I'd love to find Bill alive and make him spit out one or two things that interest me. 
<laughs> Besides, I like working with you. <laughs> to begin with, we must get out of here. It may not be very easy. That stupid bastard Corbett made his soul rotten in hell. Was right for once. It's impossible to get any information, and we run the risk of getting caught. Besides which, there's nothing here. We've been around so long, we managed to squeeze the last thing of value out of Springfield. Bail the water. Out west, they say that gold flows like water. Immense territory, difficult communications, poor roads, and no railroads, or Pinkerton agents. What more could any of us want? Just say the word. We've had enough of this stinking hole. Let's all go west. I'm ready, Bill. Good for you. Get everything ready. We're leaving tonight. We split up far as Kansas. Better if we're not seen together. Sheriff! Come over here, quick! Sheriff! Sheriff! What do you want? And stop that yelling. You just take a look over there. I was asleep. I didn't hear a thing. When I woke up, I saw him hanging there. I'll go call the sheriff. No, wait. I think he's still alive. Let's take him down. All right. But back up against that wall with your hands up. Very well. Down. You don't think I'm comfortable, do you? My name's not important, but I assure you, Lucy, I'm a very good friend. Please go. I don't want to speak to anyone. Yes, I'm going. But first, I want you to listen to me. You're in love with Kit, am I right? I'm sure you don't want to see anything happen to Kit. You mean he's in danger? He'll always be in danger. You must know that very well. But there is something I can do to help him out. But without your help, it's difficult. What can I do? Do you know where he's gone? Wait, Lucy. Go away. I'll tell you nothing. You're just aiming to kill him to collect the reward. No, I don't want to kill Kit. I said I'm a friend. 
If you're really in love with Michael, you must tell me where he's gone. But how do you know his real name's Michael? I know more about him than you do, Lucy. Believe me. Well? He's not here. He's on his way to Kansas. They're headed for Colorado. Thanks. You'll never regret that you told me. I hope not. Down yonder, we'll find some food and water. Uh, this damn horse is on its last leg. No wonder. Two days and two nights without stopping. Uh, no doubt about it. They're Mormons. There'll be no swearing. You can't stop us from swearing, Bill. Well, at least try to keep your mouth shut. The peace of the Lord be with you, gentlemen. Amen. The way is long and very weary. Will you rest a while? Thank you, sir. You see, our mule pack with the supplies fell over a cliff. And when I saw you, I said to myself, the devil take me if it isn't heaven sending us those good Mormons. Would you give us a little water and some food, huh? I'm sorry, we only have enough food for the duration of our trip, you see. We're going to Colorado, but if you want to come with us, we'll be glad to share the little we have. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Heaven will surely reward you for this good deed. <laughs> There's no doubt that we're on their tracks and that all seven of them are together. What we don't know is whether they're two or three days ahead of us. Well, they've certainly been moving awful fast. Yeah, we'll overtake them. You'll see. Alan, what side were you on in this damn war? <laughs> With the North. My family's from Tennessee. Yeah. All in favor of Jefferson Davis and the Confederacy. I'd always lived up north. And I had different ideas. My father died without ever forgiving me for it. Killed in the war? He was hanged by Union soldiers. He used to sit up in the trees and take pot shots at him. Now, how about you? North or south? In between. I sold horses to the north and information to the south. <laughs> it was the same thing for you, huh? You bet it was. Daniel Samuelson is the one thing I worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that your leader has founded a colony in Utah. Is that where you're headed for? No, we're not going that far. We've acquired a small ranch by correspondence. It's near Puebla in Colorado. We expect to settle there to establish one of our colonies, with God's help. Made up only of men? You may have seen we have some young men with us. We hope to find some good women so as to multiply with the divine grace of God. Amen. Well, with your permission, we'll go to sleep. We're going to. Tomorrow will be a long day. They must have a little money to buy seed and farm tools, I figure. Above all, they've got food and plenty of water. What do you say? Let's take everything they've got and take their horses with us, too, so that even if they wanted to, they couldn't come after us. Now, you haven't been converted for a plate of uh, beans. Zachary Hutchinson, the trouble with you is you've never been able to see beyond the end of your nose if you use your head. You'd be a leader like me instead of what you are. Now listen to me. The Mormons have bought a ranch. They bought it by correspondence. Therefore, nobody knows who they are. We can use this to our advantage. What could be more respectable than a colony of Mormons who cultivate the land and raise cattle, working as farmers during the day and bandits at night? You're a genius, Bill, but we'll have to kill everyone, huh? Don't tell me the idea scares you. What do you think, kid? I don't agree with you, Bill. I'm no butcher, no sir. Since when have you had such scruples? What's on your mind? Well, Bill, I don't like the idea of innocent folk being killed. 
All right, you stay here. Stack, warn the others. When you hear the shooting, you can turn around and stay put until the whole thing's over. Awful dressed in black. Why, you look like you're gonna take part in a funeral. <laughs> get, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! That's odd. Three fires for seven men. Maybe they ran into some other people. You see this? Huh. Looks like there was fighting. It must have been serious. Cold 38. Do you know if there was anyone religious among them? I don't believe so. Why? Then I don't think they're the ones we're looking for at all. Let's go. Everything seems to be in order, Mr. Chatterton. I want to wish you prosperity and good luck. I'm sure you'll get along with the people around Pueblo. They're all fine folk. Why, I'm certain that we'll get along. As you very well know, brotherhood is a rule of our religion. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, if there's nothing else you have to... No, no. This is a deed of property to the house. Goodbye, Mr. Chatterton. Thank you kindly, sir. Goodbye, brother. Hey, I wish you. Hooray! <laughs> Shut up, you idiots! Don't forget, Mormons are serious people and never do much talking. Tonight we're going into town and I want you all to make a good impression on our neighbors. Explain, there's been a mistake.
to behave like a civilized person. How could I know she was the owner's wife? Ah, uh, well, you should have found out. Come on back to the church! You, I thought I told you to watch that drinking. You behave worse than an animal. Can't you learn to stay sober? That whiskey tastes like kerosene. I want a dollar a bottle. That's enough, damn it. Well, we better get home now. You've caused enough trouble for one day. <laughs> Why don't you drink the milk if you can't stand out? Get them all them cows. Why don't you get yourselves a couple of women? <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll send you one or two. You'll pay for this. Come on, Zachary. Oh, Marcia, maybe you can save some. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. What would you like? Two beers. Looks to me like you've had some kind of a brawl. <laughs> it happens sometimes. We're friendly people around here, but we don't put up with bullies. Strangers? A family of Mormons who bought a ranch nearby in Blackstone County. They came here to celebrate, but they're mighty bad drinkers. I'm quite sure they're not coming here again. We made them understand pretty well that we're in no mood for joking. Have you seen any other strangers around here in the last few days? Hmm. An officer about a week ago. I think he was on his way to join his regiment at Fort Idesdale. His name was, hmm, Toussaint. Yes, Major Toussaint. As you see, very few people come to this place. <laughs> I expect him to stay a while? I don't think so. Maybe till sundown. There you are, and thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? Spending all that precious money at the Springfield Bank, huh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, they must have stopped somewhere outside the town. But how do you think they'll get their supplies? Yes, you're right. What a funny coincidence. It's a Mormon prayer book. The sacred scripture of their religion. Don't you find it strange? And Mormons don't use Colt 38s, do they? At most, an old hunting rifle. And uh, they don't go and get drunk in saloons. It uh, mightn't be a bad idea if we paid those Mormons a visit. <laughs> yeah. it seems. They've only got one escort.
Gentlemen, for the moment, your trip is over. Get out and line up. Turn over anything gold or silver. You can hold on to family keepsakes, unless they happen to be valuable. Sleeping at this hour of the day? Maybe they're not at home. Let's wait a while. And what if we're mistaken, Dan? The bandits will have a big advantage to boot. I'll go take a look around. No one knows me. They won't suspect anything. You keep me covered. Is there anybody home? What's all that shouting? Who are you? What are you doing here? Good morning to you. I'm a farmer just the same as you, and I'm heading out west. Rebecca and I are thirsty. Now, who'd you say? Rebecca's my horse. Excuse me for not asking permission first. Uh, may I? Yeah, take all the water you want. But then get yourself out of here. I don't need any farm hands. Pity, I would have been happy to work for you. I'll help myself, you don't mind. Zachary Hutchinson, Bill Anderson's henchman. I think he's the only one home. What do we do now? Well, there are several things we could do. We could go back into town and organize a posse. I think that would be pleasing to the citizens of Pueblo. No, my friend. Better think of something else. You want the reward. And I'm not taking any risks right now. You know, I think you're right. For example, we might get rid of this one first and then wait for the other men to return. I'd like to see you try it. Get your hands up. Listen, Zach, I've seen that one before. Yeah, it's him. That's the one that killed Snake. Yeah, you're right. It's a man that kid set free. We'll take him to the ranch. I don't know why we don't kill him now. 
It'd be a lot simpler, Zack. It's not our business to decide. It's up to Bill. Oh, no! All right, men. Let's make it quick. By this time, we ought to be back at the ranch, working. Working, sure. What do you suppose we've been doing till now? <laughs> well, what do you say? Is it deep enough now? No. Nope. The coyotes that smell you, and they just start digging. Well, if you ask me, I think it'll be ready by the time Bill gets here. Then we'll be digging for a million years. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You think they'll release Bill after questioning him? No, I don't think so. Unless he confesses what they did for those poor moments. What do you know? You better tell me. What happened to our friends? Well, what was the name, Dan, of that major that caught him? Tucson, wasn't it? Yes, I think so. Pretty soon, the whole garrison of Fort Isdale should be here. If I were you two, I'd uh, pack up and leave right away. <coughs> Alan, that was mighty fine work. <laughs> but now we must finish it. They shouldn't be found here. I think it'll be difficult if we can make them a little nervous. They're still at it. What do they want with this firing? It's making me nervous. I want to get out of here. That's precisely what they want. Stay calm. That's easy to say. How long are you going to wait here? We'll have to get out sooner or later. We've no water. We can't stay trapped in here the longer we stay. The worse it is. And anyway, they must have warned everybody. And they're coming here to get us. We must get out of here. Bill, don't you want to wait for Finnegan and Zachary? Listen, can't you get into your brain that those two aren't going to come back? Let's not lose any time. You three go out and try and surround them. Kid and I will try and draw them to the house. All right. Come on, let's go. Come on, kid. Let's get out of here. When you hear them fire the first shot, we'll clear out of this stinking hole. Oh, are you afraid, Bill? Sure, I'm afraid. Afraid when I don't know what's happening. Afraid of people I can't see. Then you're going alone. I want to know who's out there waiting. No, kid. You can't stay here. They'll kill you. Listen, kid. We must go out together. I'm sure we'll make it. No, I'm not coming. I don't see him anymore. They're trying to surround us. Watch.
Take my advice, kid. Please listen. I've always thought of you as if you were my own son. It scares me. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. You gotta calm down. Maybe you should drink this. Listen, kid, it's the end. I'm sure of it. We can't stay here. Let's both of us get out of here before it's too late. It's already much too late. Can't you see you're already dead, Bill, huh? No. No, kid, I don't want to die. Let's get out of here. We'll begin a new life together. We'll begin a new life together. Somewhere else. Come with me, please, kid. And the other partners? I don't give a damn about those three. Wait, kid, listen to me. You can't leave me here. Kid, you gotta help me. Let me go, Bill Anderson. You're not a real man, Bill. I finally know. I'm through. You're just a fraud. Kid! 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 <clears throat> well, those three won't give us any more trouble. You stay here. I'll go and get Bill. You're just the same old Alan. For you, it's always been real easy. Why don't you shoot? Come on. Come on, shoot. Get it over with. No, Michael. I came to take you away with me. And I can do it even without a gun. Don't move, Alan. Don't force me to shoot you. I told you I didn't want to see you anymore. You're alone now. What are you going to do, join another band of murderers? What do you think they were, a bunch of heroes? You've seen what a skunk Bill was. You say one more thing, I'll plug you. I'll do it, Alan. No, kid. You're coming. Just one more step, Alan. This way. You couldn't have helped me out, Alan. It was too late. Don't speak now, Michael. Now I know you were worried about me. Thanks.
I'm sorry, Alan. It's my brother. I promised to bring him back home. Your brother? But why didn't you tell me that before? I don't know what to say. Don't bother now. Just go. So long, Alan. 